<laughs> yeah, an Italian motorcycle with low maintenance. Sure, buddy, sure. Oh, wait. Never mind. All right, folks, now today is gonna to look a little bit different. And the reason why is because the CEO of Energica US flew out to Austin and shipped this motorcycle just so that he could meet with me and we could talk about this motorcycle before I took it out for a ride. And he wants to meet up at a charging station and show me how fast this thing can actually charge. Now, somebody makes that offer only if they are supremely confident in their motorcycle. And before we get too much further into this one, I need to take a second and shout out a member on the Discord server, Magic Toaster. He's the guy who put this entire thing in motion. He even got my foot in the door at AF1. And for those of you who don't know, he is a massive Energica fan, owning an Ego, and that is officially his starter motorcycle. He's one of the few human beings on the planet Earth who could look at a motorcycle and be like, I am going to keep it in the lowest power mode until I'm ready for more. I certainly do not have that kind of restraint, so I'm actually pretty impressed. And the only thing he asked in return for doing all of this, for getting me a relationship at AF1, and resulting in the CEO of Energica here in Austin to show me this Ava Rabella, is that we shout out his brother's channel, Engineering Perspectives, the link is down below. They're trying to get over a thousand subscribers and they're really close. So if some of y'all could check out that link down in the description below, it would mean a lot to me and certainly would mean a lot to Magic Toaster. Now with all of that being said, it's time to get this motorcycle out on the road for my first impressions. All right, folks, once again, we got an opportunity to do a completely raw first impression. I haven't spent any time on this motorcycle, though I did get the run through about all the cool stuff that's going on over at Energica from Stefano, who's actually standing right over there. He is the CEO of Energica US, which is unbelievable. I can't believe that he came out here to basically walk me through their hyper naked here. So, that is correct. This is a hyper naked. So we're going to see how an electric hyper naked motorcycle feels. So let's mount up on this thing. And right away, you do feel a little bit of weight out of these bikes. You know, electric bikes are still kind of heavy and they have cut a lot of weight on this. Uh, I believe the first Ego is like 630 pounds, which is hardly weight. And then this thing right here, it's it's pretty portly between the legs. Um, so let's go ahead and turn it on. Oh, I got to pull the brake and the ignition. And it says go when you're ready to go. Okay, so we're in sport mode with medium engine braking, although because we're at 100% charge, the engine braking isn't going to start yet. So he did let me know to be careful of that as I'm going because it isn't going to break for me. All right, let's get underway here. All right, out we go, onto the highway. <laughs> yeah, that's got a lot more power than I would expect from the usual electric motorcycle. Wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a ton of juice. That's awesome. <laughs> it feels like a proper street fighter, too. That's super cool. It's a little heavy side to side, though. That's for sure. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of power out of this bike. That's super cool. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, now I can start to feel, I th at least I think that's the regen, definitely feels like there's a extra brake on there, so I think I may have knocked off enough power out of the battery that it allows it to recharge now. Alright, I gotta do one more pull before we go over to the twisty road section of the first impressions. 
because this has been the first electric motorcycle where it actually feels like it's making real horsepower. Oh yeah! <laughs> that is just instant power. <laughs> Gotta love that. All right, let's get this thing on a twisty road and see how this bike can make 171-ish horsepower feel. Uh, and despite its weight, let's see how it handles. Okie dokie pokies, it is now twisty road time on the Ava Rebella here. And I am playing this on hard mode today. <laughs> A, it is very cold outside. B, it has just rained, as you can see by the ground. And C, I have not turned down the power in this because sport mode feels like a ton of fun and I don't want to experience any of the other ones yet. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. However, I have turned up the uh, regenerative braking to the max just to see how it feels. Now I will say I have put on 20 miles since my last charge and I'm already down to 76%. So uh, by that math, theoretically, I could squeeze out another 60 miles or something like that. But that's assuming my current rate of usage. That's one thing that I'm noticing with this bike is because it's so goddamn potent it really sucks up the juice. It can discharge super, super quickly, uh, but it can also charge really quickly or so I've been told. Man, that regen feels great around the corners. So that's super cool. So right now I'm rolling into this corner, no brakes, just regen. And it, it feels a little bit like I'm dragging the rear brake. Um, it feels nice. That's one of the best parts about the live wire. That was one of the things I really loved on the live wire was the feeling of the regenerative braking. And this is tuned super, super well too. And here we gotta add a little bit of actual brake because we're getting into our first big corner. And power out, oh, man. There is so much power on tap here. Holy cow. <laughs> this thing is so fast <laughs> and it's doing the usual electric bike thing where you get that connection to the road because it's the the uh the powertrain is so smooth that you feel every nook and cranny in the road if you roll over a crack you can feel it you know it's super different from riding an ICE bike, but not in a bad way. It feels really nice. And the handling is gorgeous. Obviously, it's a little heavy side to side, but, you know, for your average normal human being, it's feeling fine. Like, you know, I can just dip it down. We got some wet spots here, but, you know, I slow down and then pick it up and then slow it down into this hairpin here and it we have big dual disc brembos up front so it stops really really nicely especially with the regen braking and you don't have to worry about downshifting it's actually like a really active way to ride a motorcycle because you're just always in the right spot so uh you know it, you don't have to worry about shifting gears you can really focus on what you're doing this thing is a weapon. <laughs> Pull the wheel off the ground there, plow, powering out of a corner while still at lean on Lime Creek. This is the hardest I've squitted on this road. Pretty much ever. <laughs> so, now what we gotta do is we gotta pull this motorcycle over and we gotta talk some specs on this because this is the first electric bike, again, where it feels like it's making its quoted power figures. So let's talk about it. Diving on into the specs on the Ava Rebella here, what are we dealing with? Well, we have a zero CC motorcycle. That is correct. No displacement, or that's not technically true. There is some displacement going on in here, but it's not like you're used to. This thing right here has a 21.5 kilowatt, that's the maximum capacity on this battery, 
which makes it the biggest battery on a motorcycle at the given time. The Xperia actually has a slightly bigger battery, but that's another Energica, so once they figure that out, they're gonna slap it in one of these motorcycles. Now at 80%, we are dealing with 18.9 kilowatts. And the reason why I call out 80% is because anything below that, you can really dump a ton of voltage into it and you can charge it really, really quickly, but charging slows down once you get over 80%. So you're dealing with a very fast charge time for 80% of the tank, which again, is still bigger than the other bikes out there. Okay, now we've talked a lot about the battery in this thing. I'm sorry, it's, it's really important on these things. Batteries are super duper important. But the fun numbers, these are the torque values. How much torque is this thing making? 159 foot-pounds, holy cow, is that a big old number. That is second only in my estimation to the Rocket 3, which this honestly feels about as torquey as a Rocket 3. And that's saying something because a lot of the electric motorcycles I ride, they claim these massive torque numbers, but you don't really feel it. You can feel like a certain percentage of it, but you don't actually get that just massive whack of torque that you get on really torquey ICE bikes. That's here on this bike. One of the coolest things is it's not just got big numbers for torque, it's got big horsepower numbers too. 171 peak horsepower and 150 sustained on this guy. And again, it feels like it's making that much power, which is really cool. A lot of the other electric motorcycles that I've ridden, you feel like you're getting a percentage of it. No, I definitely feel like I'm getting 170 horsepower when I whack the throttle on this thing and it picks the front wheel up. Now, unfortunately, the biggest battery in the business comes at a weight premium, and that's something that you deal with on all electric motorcycles, but this one is particularly portly, 573 pounds. This is a big old boy, and you really do feel it between your knees once it starts leaning side to side. Now, that gives me a good opportunity to mount up on the motorcycle and talk about the ergonomics package that we've got here. This has a 31.5 inch seat height, and you can see that I've got a pretty good bend in my knee, but I'm easily flat footing this at six foot four and my boots 240 pounds. One thing that is interesting though, is when you get your foot up on the peg and your hands on the bars, this honestly feels like a street triples riding position. It's very aggressive, a lot like a Tuono in fact you're riding this thing as if it is a sport bike with a handlebar. It does feel like the pegs are a little bit lower, but not significantly. This is still a pretty aggressive place to sit. And it feels great when you get it on the side of the tire. Now that provides the perfect segue into talking about the pros and cons on this motorcycle. The first thing that I am gonna mention is the range anxiety. This motorcycle, is so much fun to ride and you get so much power so fast out of sport mode, but because you can discharge a ton of voltage with a massive motor and a massive battery, you do burn through a lot of battery range really, really quickly and you end up looking down at the dash and seeing how much range you have left. You can see the active consumption, so if you're trying to maximize your range, you can actually watch that but it is worth pointing out that like every other motorcycle in the electric line that I've tested, I have had some range anxiety on this bike. But again, that's partly down to because of how much fun this thing is. Holy cow, is this motor so much fun. It is so torquey and it's just the, the sound that it makes is so unique. It's one of those weird things where you don't think of how electric motorcycles sound because you think they all sound the same. No, this has straight cut gears in it and you definitely hear a slightly different whine. I'm not gonna say it sounds completely different, but it definitely has its own unique character to it, which is cool. One thing I don't love is I don't love the clusters on here. I don't like the button layout. I don't really love navigating the menu. It's kind of a pain in the butt. This thing has a mode switch right above the blinkers, so I end up smacking the mode switch around when I'm trying to signal or I'm trying to, I'm trying to change modes and I'm turning on the, the lights. I really don't like two rocker switches right above each other 
on that left hand cluster. It would be really nice if it was just a joystick. The last thing I'm going to touch on here are the looks on this bike. I think because it's an electric bike, the sort of Decepticon looking MT-10 style of headlight and fairings and so forth, I think it suits this thing really, really well. And I love the fact that when you key it on, the little Energica logo in the tank has a green uh, EKG line that goes on. That's super duper cool but I could also see it being a little goofy if you want your motorcycle to be a bit more serious. Now with the pros and cons being out of the way, let's get this thing on the road and see what it's like as a commuter. Now, depending on who you talk to, commuting is either the bane or the savior of electric motorcycles. There's a lot of people out there who think that commuting is where these things belong because their range limits them to you know, really long distances, so you can't go out for weekend rides. But then there's some other people who are like, yeah, I have to commute from London to New York the long way round every day, twice uphill, and it's snowing every single day of the week. So I can't take an electric bike because it just doesn't have the range. Now, let's talk about that range argument a little bit. So the cool thing about the Energica right here is it has this range counter and it currently says 32 miles because I was absolutely flogging this thing getting some flybys. Uh, so I, I taught it that it's basically just going to spend, you know, the last 10 miles at full throttle, which it kind of did. But that 32 mile range estimation will change every few miles based on how you're currently riding the motorcycle. So you are going to see a lot of fluctuation there. And I mentioned it earlier, but this has an active readout of how many kilowatts you're using. So if you're really trying to optimize, you can keep an eye on that. And you see at 40 miles an hour, I'm only using five kilowatts. So this thing will go for a long, long distance at that speed. But let's be real, nobody commutes at, you know, 45 miles an hour nor do they commute at the speed limit. The speed limit on this road is 55, and I am not doing 55 right now. And you can see the kilowatts kind of bouncing around. Right now, cruising at 76, it's at eight, but if I go down, it's, at, it's gonna make up some power because of the regenerative braking, but then I get on the throttle, and it pops the wheel up and spins the rear, and it's using like 100 kilowatts. So your usage is really going to bounce around based entirely on how you use the throttle. So there is a little bit of relearning that you're going to have to do if you do want to start commuting on an electric motorcycle. So obviously there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here that we're going to talk about with modes and so forth, but let's talk about the ergonomics on this thing. How does it feel going down the road? Well. I mentioned it in the spec section, but the ergos on this are pretty aggressive. Uh, for a naked bike especially, it feels like you're, you know, kind of meant to be leaned forward riding this thing in an attack stance all ready to get in a tuck and stuff. Um, it feels a lot like the Street Triple, and when I rode that bike around, I didn't love it when I was just poodling around on the highway. And I could feel this motorcycle start to get exhausting as I was going through some of the stoplight to stoplight stuff connecting all of my various camera locations. That being said, the seat's nice, the handlebars are good and wide, which I like, and the bike does have cruise control on it. However, the way this cruise control button set up, is set up annoys me. It's, 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 it might be one of the most irritating cruise control layouts I've ever seen. Uh, because this cluster, I think, is right off the Turismo Lusso and Via Gusta. Um, so what you have to do is you have to press and hold and then it goes and then if you set you can you know change your speed and that'll that'll be your new set but it like you need two hands to operate it it's really hard to operate this thing with just your thumbs because that's a freaking reach and a half like you have to hold the throttle with two fingers to get to the cruise control buttons it really should be right here. And that's where cruise control is on a lot of motorcycles or on the Aprilias, which if they stole the left-hand Aprilia cluster, they just have the um, 
ACC, I guess they call it Aprilia Cruise Control, where you just like push down with your off hand. That would be better. Also, another thing that kind of annoys me is there's no roll forward to kill, uh, which means that you either need to turn it off by hand or you need to hit the brakes. And I don't like that. I don't like not having the uh, forward to kill on cruise. It's just, it's super intuitive and I wish it would become a standard. Okay, so the cruise control kind of sucks and the ergonomics are a little bit aggressive, but let's talk about the power modes on here. This is another thing that I mentioned before. I don't like the way the menus are set up. So to select your uh, mode, there's a settings button that's hidden. You're not gonna be able to see it, but it's down here by my index finger on my left hand. You click that and then you can select with the left side here, you select your mode. So let's say we wanna go into urban and then you're in urban mode, just like that. I'm not really feeling a massive difference between urban and sport, so uh, it's still pretty darn zesty. However, one thing that, again, really annoys me is you have to press right to select your engine braking, right? So let's say we want low engine braking and we wanna put it in rain mode. And then you press in and it sets, right? That's fine, that's totally fine, but it's it's one of those things where like I'm like, okay, I want this, so I push in, and then I have to open the menu again and then toggle to the right to select my uh, regenerative braking. That bums me out a little bit. And this is the last thing that I don't really like on this bike as a commuter. So you go into, you hold set, and you go to eco mode. When you turn on eco mode, it's like capped at 60 miles an hour. You can go no faster, which is really, really annoying, especially if you're on a road like you're in Texas, where you kind of need to be able to go faster. It's really like, I understand, okay, eco mode, you're trying to save battery power. Maybe you're just poodling around in the city, but what if you accidentally do the thing like where you go like okay see i'm full throttle and the bike is not giving the i'm full throttle and the bike's not giving me anything more it's capped 55 miles an hour it's capped so to get out of it you have to go set and then you have to find another mode and then let it do its thing and then you're free i really do not like any mode that is going to cap my speed. Again, sure, maybe it's totally useful in the city, but I have had enough like missteps setting up the menu that this eco mode, it should be one of those things where like you can switch modes really, really fast. And I'm sure if you've had this bike for a long time, you'll get more used to it, but it's, it, it's a little bit nerve wracking to me in Texas where speed limits are uh, suggestions on the best of times and uh, just outright flaunted in the worst to have a mode where I can't go faster than standard interstate speeds. Now to round out this commuting section, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna head off and find a charging station and see how long it's gonna take to get from wherever the charge ends up to 80% on the fastest charging station that I can find at my local HEB. Final charge report to round out the uh, commuting segment here. It took us about half an hour, 27 minutes, according to my phone. Let me uh, pull up the timer. 27 minutes and 15 seconds to get from 40% to where are we at now? 86%. So we could have pulled the charger out even sooner but we chose to just kind of stand around and have a little bit of a chat. So uh, all things considered, a half an hour to get, you know, almost 90 miles in the tank is, it's not bad. 
you know. Uh, one of the things I will say while I'm packing my camera gear up here is we did encounter a small issue with one of the charging stations. We uh, originally were at an HEB just down the road, but for whatever reason, the charging station didn't work. So uh, we had to move over. And this is one of the things where, you know, electric vehicles, uh, motorcycles or uh, cars or what have you, they're still a nascent technology. And, you know, uh, the charging argument is a legitimate argument to be made when it comes to a bike like this. I mean, I had to spend the uh, last 27 minutes in this lovely parking lot with uh, nothing but to do but hang out and chat with Stefano, who's uh, hit the road already. But, you know, it's a new technology, so I can see how folks would both not like it or be willing to work around it. Now, with all that being said, let's pull the bike over and, ha well, find a slightly more enjoyable photogenic spot to pull the bike over and have a conversation with the Discord boys because seeing as how this is the first electric bike on the channel, I assume they have a ton of questions they would like to have answered. Diving straight on in with the questions here, Ride Red asks, how lifeless is the battery on wheels? Honestly, it really does not feel like a battery on wheels, nor does it feel lifeless. This thing has a lot more personality than I would have thought. It's, it seems to me that it's really just the Zeros that are the lifeless versions of the electric bikes. All the other ones seem to have a lot going on. 186 miles an hour on a Honda Shadow asks, what is the Spite suggested retail price and how does it stack up against MSRP? So for the Spite suggested retail price, I would set this probably, if I paid 20 grand for this, I'd feel okay. And as far as the MSRP, we're gonna talk about that in the next segment. So sit tight on that one. Corgi asks, will Toaster finally shut up? No, he won't. Even, even if I didn't like it, he wouldn't, but I like it, so it's gonna add more fuel to the fire. So, you know, of course not. And how do I think it would compare to the Cor Cor Eka Corgica? He's building his own KV uh, KZ 1000, I think, uh, into an electric vehicle. Um, dude, I'm not gonna touch that bike unless I'm wearing an asbestos suit and some rubber gloves. That thing terrifies me. This doesn't. Macrack asks, can you describe the parking mode function and how does it help with the weight of the bike? Uh, okay, so if you turn the bike on and you press and hold the, uh, the kill switch on it, it'll actually activate a parking mode where you can back the bike up or there's a slow forward motion where you can basically walk the bike forward under the electric battery. It's super, super useful if you're trying to move this thing around and there's a hill around you um it's one of those things where it's not necessary to have but it's really nice that it has it <laughs> magic toaster spite have i finally converted you and shown you the glory of energica no you haven't converted me however i do understand why you like this bike so much it's a great great machine it's awesome i really enjoyed my day with it but i'm not gonna go buy one so a little bit of a spoiler alert there for my final impressions on it, but it's true. This thing is not going to find itself in my garage. And let's hit the road one last time and talk about why. Now, as I start wrapping up my thoughts here, the best thing I can say about today is that it has been a thrilling ride on this motorcycle. I've really, really enjoyed my time on it. However, I can't say that this motorcycle is uh, ready to take its place in my stable as my sole good time to wield goof around machine. So let's start with the good stuff. Obviously, I mean, this thing handles like a dream. It's, you know, it's super duper potent and it's got a lot of character for a electric bike, you know? It's got that same sort of feeling that the live wire does where you can tell that it was a motorcycle built for motorcyclists by motorcyclists. And 
that's awesome. I love that. It, it means that these motorcycles are, they're more than just a vehicle to the people who are making them. You know, Zero, I'm sure there's some plenty passionate people there, but it doesn't translate to their bikes. Whereas on Livewire and on this bike right here, you can tell that motorcyclists screwed this thing together and they, they designed it to be a fun motorcycle. And it, and it is, absolutely it is. It goes down the road, it handles really, really well. It's a ton, a ton of fun to ride. But, but it's not perfect. You know, uh, it's, it's hard to get away from the fact that with a motorcycle this much fun to whack the throttle open on, you just eat through the battery. You just nom 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 nom. Just chewing the battery down, getting through it as, basically, as fast or as slow as you want to. But, you know, you're not going to want to go slow because it's all, this bike is so good at going fast. And anybody who's going to get one of these is not going to get a 170 horsepower hyper naked to just, you know, ride the speed limit. Like if I just did this right here, if I just did this, I could get so much mileage out of this motorcycle, but I would be so bored. Oh my God, I would be so bored. And that's one of the bummers about this thing is, you know, it's still, it's still a piece of early adopter technology. And, you know, we, uh, I met Stefano at our first charge station and it didn't work. You know, we, we tried it up and, you know, we were, it was out front of an HEB where we could go inside and grab a drink or something while we were waiting for it to charge and have a conversation. And that would, would have been all well and good, but the charging station just didn't work. The bike is fine. It wasn't a problem with the bike because we went to another charging port and it worked. It charged great. But the one that I went to, at first it didn't work. And you're going to encounter those problems. The thing about a gas station is it's a solved problem. It's a mousetrap. You can't improve the gas station. Maybe you can clean the bathrooms, but every time you put your card in a pump, it's gonna work. It might steal your card information while it's doing it, but you know, you're gonna you're gonna get gas. And in that sense, it's a little bit hard for somebody who you know, like me, lives in a big-ass state like Texas, who does big-ass rides, to know that my bike is so much fun to ride, but that I'm a little bit worried to grab the throttle. Now, let's say, for instance, that I just want a bike for this, where I'm just going through some, you know, local, very local twisties. I haven't taken this bike, I've done uh, probably about 80 miles today so far, uh, but I haven't really left Austin. And if that's the kind of riding you're looking to do, you could definitely make the case for this. Now, the last thing I wanna mention is the price. I have not talked about it yet. I didn't want the price to color my expectations with this bike, so I actually didn't. I knew it was north of 20 grand, but I didn't know what it was. It's a 24,700 and I believe $50 motorcycle. So 24,800, we'll call it 24,800, almost 25 grand. You're not gonna get this motorcycle out of a dealership for less than 25 Gs. Is it a $25,000 bike? Yes, but, yes, but, it's, it's hard. It's hard for me to be like, yes, you absolutely should go out and spend your hard-earned cashy money on this unless you have something else that you can ride. Like, this is, this is not, this more so than other bikes that I've ridden tends to strike me as a bit of a toy for for folks it, it this this definitely feels like it's hitting that that toy category uh it's it's your weekend go fast hooligan bike but you also have a gas powered bike in the garage and that's fine that's totally fine but for 25 grand it's a little tough 
it's a little tough. However, with that all being said, I do want to end this video by saying this has been one of the most fun electric motorcycles I've ever ridden. Um, I've ridden the Zero, I've ridden the Live Wire, and I've ridden this. I've ridden two different Zeros, actually. And by far, in a way, this is now the number one electric bike. It just is. Do I think it's the most practical? No, I think I would give that to the Live Wire. Um, I think the Live Wire generally is a little bit more practical. Its range is great. The, the range on the Live Wire is awesome. And the range on this would be great if I stopped doing this. <laughs> but I don't want to stop doing that. I want to have fun on this bike. And when you have fun, you lose range. So it's like a toss up kind of deal. It's, it's hard to, it's hard, it's hard to find the balance. So there you have it guys. Those are my thoughts on the Energica Eva Rebella RS. This is an awesome motorcycle. And more so than any other bike, it's not for everybody. I highly recommend that you take a shot and you ride one just so you can experience what this is all about. Because this is a serious experience. It's a ton of fun. But I'm not going to run out and buy one. At least not yet. So guys, a huge shout out, a huge shout out to Energica for putting all of this together, for willing to put up with my silliness for a video, sending me the motorcycle, and Stefano for coming out to meet with me and show me how it all works. That was unbelievable. And I cannot believe just, you know, how, how much they stand by their product, that they're going to do that for just some dude who's making a video on YouTube. And of course, guys, remember this all happened. All of this happened because one extremely passionate Discord boy got me connected with AF1, who got me connected with Energica, and here we are. So do me a favor and click that link down below. Check out Magic Toaster's brother's channel if you have any interest in EV content. And until then, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.